and welcome. In this video, we will discuss some topics uh, presented in, in the Gospel text and in the Old Testament text about uh, what is the mission of God, the Missio Dei, what is the mission of the Church, and uh, in light of that, um, what is the mission of God through the light of the relationship model of creation? How does that affect everything today? So we will see some images, we will discuss some topics, and uh, we will hopefully, at the end of this video, uh, find out what it truly means to be uh, called into the creation of God. We, uh, we live in a world today that in many ways has lost its sense of self and has become a world of automatons driven by a process and system of which its ends we don't fully understand. For example, Let's take a look at ourselves, Americans. In America where the business of America has indeed, in fact, become business. The government has come to serve and protect the businesses while the people, in turn, serve and protect the government. Which, unbeknowingly, that has come to serve good business, which many do not fully understand this concept. Our corporations today have become bigger than the government and in many ways have a lot to say weight and control within the government. The problem is that these corporations and businesses which are legally treated as a self are driven by profit, gain, greed, and production. They are not concerned with the health, well-being, and livelihood of people, creatures, cultures, and the effects of their purposes. For example, we have big box companies like Walmart, for instance, that have started locally here in America and now send much of their business across seas to the countries like China where labor laws are few and workers are many and cheap. Walmart within the past 10 or 20 years has become the fastest growing and most profitable business in America. But it has much to do with exploitation as do many of these examples. They set prices high or they actually they set prices low on products and force the manufacturers to compete and fight for who will sell and produce this product to Walmart. They produce goods so cheaply that American businesses cannot compete and are forced into either bankruptcy or to move elsewhere. There are little to no benefits for the workers within Walmart itself and also our economy and jobs are in fact being sold off to other countries and companies. agriculture has gone industrial and has changed more within the past 50 years than it has within the past two centuries. This means that it is corporately owned and run by the business. One practice of the agricultural businesses is the exploration and use of GMOs or genetically modified organisms. This involves the invasion to most cases using viruses and bacteria to cross the cell membrane and it crosses natural boundaries that are not meant to be crossed within nature. Tomato genes are crossed with fish. Human genes can be found in plants such as corn or others. And these are but a few. There are also chemicals that are introduced into the structure of plants which in turn have created super weeds and terminator bugs that are immune to lethal doses of chemicals. This is a business that has pushed out small-time farmers and that has even put a patent on organisms. These businesses have in fact patented life. And like I said, these are just a few examples. There are many that can be discussed. But what do we do with all this? What do we do with this type of lifestyle? A linear system that is trying to affect circular natural systems. 
Does it not alarm people that companies like British Petroleum get away with degrading the Gulf of Mexico and crippling the environment and local economies for decades to come? Does it not alarm people that we are losing nearly half of our topsoil each year when it takes 100 years to create one inch of soil? Does it not alarm people that third world countries, their people, communities, and environments are exploited as long as consumerism and capitalism and other types of government continue to become the norm? We must understand that as the body, we are a part of a very intricate, deep, and complex whole. This whole is the whole of nature which is greater than the sum of its parts. And once a certain part dies off or is removed, then the rest of the whole is affected. No human history is separate from the histories of nature and also vice versa. Nature is not creatures and plants. It includes humanity and all of creation that God himself had formed from the beginning. As we are in relationship, we all are in turn in relation with God. We must know this as our identity of Christians. We must understand that this is a part of who we are and should greatly affect what we become. You might be listening to this and wondering, what does this have to do with me? How does this have to do with me as a part of the body of Christ? You may even be thinking, this is too political for me. But let's think about it for a minute. What is our mission as the church? As the people of God, is it not to live out God's will, to live within the order He created? What is God's will? In Genesis 1 and 2, God works with the very things He creates. He doesn't lord it over them to make them do as He pleases. So why then do we think it's God's will for us, a part of creation, to rule over anything else? We must work to protect and sustain the rest of creation, just as it sustains us. It is, in fact, a circular cycle. Even if we don't want to see it that way, we need fertile ground for plants. We need plants for air and for food. The animals need plants for food and for habitation. And we need animals for food and even for affection. Creation is not just the non-human. It's almost as if sometimes we forget that we were created too. If we must protect and sustain creation, we must protect and sustain the rest of humankind. The child that is sold into slavery in order to feed his or her family. The one who is exploited for cheap labor. The co-worker or fellow student who is emotionally broken and abused. We are in fact a part of a whole. And if another part is allowed to be done away with, the rest of the whole is in fact affected. We cannot be content to be blind or deaf to the destruction of creation. But most importantly, we also cannot be content to be mute about it once we acknowledge it. The Old Testament says it is God's will for his people to be a blessing, to give life. Let us not then become a curse by taking life. In light of what you guys have heard in this video, what are, you, what are your thoughts? How do you think we are affecting creation today through whether it be big business, agriculture, uh, the way we live our daily lives, anything the way that we affect God's creation? Are we benefiting? Are we destroying? Are we hurting? Uh, just kind of think about some of those things in our lives. and. That's the point of this video is a, a thought process. We don't have, we don't, I don't want to say, our group doesn't want to say that we have the answers to everything in this. Uh, really just, we want to think about it. And uh, that's it. In that, I hope you guys have uh, a great day.
great day. Adios.